Hey, what's going on? This is Christine Austin Hill with the Life Now Agency, and I'm going to let you guys listen in on part of my team training. Uh, we are hiring. Make sure you go to lifenowagency.com. So we are going over the final expense presentation tips for the best results. All right. The, the presentation is definitely a very, very important. You will find that most of us have a different style in the presentations, but there are key points that we need to know, key questions for us to be able to have the best success. And so we're going to hit on these things uh, on today. And of course, you guys know that there's a script already in the training portal. There's videos in there. They're very good. I had a chance to listen to them a few times. Um, I will add a few videos uh, for the telesales side because that, of course, is more cater to the door knocking because that is who we are. We are door knockers, but we are able to do telesales as well. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I see you guys on this side. See if I know how to work my computer today. All right. First and foremost, we want to make sure that we are properly dressed. Okay. You want to make sure that you are clean, that, you know, you don't have any sleep in your eyes, that you don't have any lettuce in your teeth. Trust and believe that has happened to me. <laughs> in the car eating while I'm driving and I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh God, I'm glad I always check myself before I get out the car. The worst thing you can do is to knock on somebody's door with a big piece of lettuce in your teeth or greens. All right. So you want to make sure that everything is in order. You definitely want to make sure that you don't have any cut up jeans. Yes, I have seen agents go into the field doing that, but I have not seen any top producers, six figure managers and agents in the field with cut up jeans. Don't do it, right? Um, you want to make sure that you have your iPad. And if you do not have your iPad, have your um, folder, have your uh, presentation binder, if you have one, just so that you can have your um, presentation, your applications and things in order. And we'll show you those things near the ending of this uh, presentation. You want to have your things nice and neat. The way you look, you know, it's the first impressions, guys. You don't want somebody not even opening it up the door because you already look like you don't have it together, okay? It's very important. You want to check your systems before you are really getting out of that car. I always, when I'm driving two to three hours, because I like to drive a little bit further away from home when I'm working, I will pull over and my daughter can contest to it because she's been in the field with me several times. I pull over about two to three blocks away from my house I get out, sometimes I'll do some stretches or whatnot, but I check my makeup, I check my clothes, I put my jacket on, I put my ID badge, I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, okay, I put my binder in the side of the door, don't I? I get it together. And then I say the lead's name by five times. We're gonna get into that a little bit later. But I make sure that when I am pulling up into that person's door or driveway, I can jump out the car, I'm ready to go. Gum is, is thrown out, right? Okay. You, again, you want to make sure that that iPad is working. And if it's not, bring your paper application to the door. Don't sit around messing around with your iPad for 20 minutes to an hour. Just use your paper app, all right? We are able to do both. You always want to make sure you're prepared. And again, uh, managers, if at any point you want to jump in while I'm doing the recap, um, feel free to do so, okay? But again, this is recap. We're going to get into the meat and potatoes uh, shortly. You want to hit that record button. All new agents and some of the older agents, if you are not doing the production that you want to do and you're not hitting the goals that you know you should be hitting, you need to be recording your presentation, all right? You need to be recording that thing. You need to have that recorded as soon as you are um, getting out that car, all right? You wanna have that thing as soon as you get out the car. Now, do this ahead of time. Don't do this when it's time for you to go out in the field. You need to do it immediately. Find out what apps work best for your phone. Download some apps. You do not have to pay for any apps, okay? Um, a lot of them are free. The ones I have on my phone are definitely free. But you want to make sure that you are able to share that audio with me or your other manager, whoever your manager is, right? Um, you want to make sure that you're able to send those recordings over. It doesn't make any sense to get out into the field, download an app, record your whole presentation, then you can't send it and nobody can hear it. 
that is the easiest way, excuse me, the best way for us to be able to hear what you are saying when you're in the field and be able to help you um, as you're going from door to door, all right? Um, yeah, and if you have questions on the app, go to YouTube, everything on YouTube, it's free. Um, they have really short videos to show you how to use the different apps, the different uh, recording apps that you can download on that phone, all right? Um, sometimes, depending on the day, you could call me or you can call Raheem or Ty or one of us managers and say, okay, I'm getting ready to door knock. Do you mind being in my earpiece? So um, I know it's kind of small, but I have my little Bluetooth, my beat that I keep in my ear at all times when I'm in the field. And that way somebody can be listening in throughout the whole, the whole time that I'm in the field and getting training as well. But for you guys that are out, you can call us and let us listen in as well. All right. It is always important to make sure that you are setting an agenda. You want to set an agenda so that the for the potential client knows what to expect. And also for you, right? You need to know what you're doing ahead of time. That is going to help you with your time. It is going to help you be able to be a professional and not a professional visitor like I was back in the day. I remember times I was in the house for three and a half hours. I knew all the grandkids' names. I knew everybody's name and didn't leave helping the family. They wanted me to come back for coffee. And I'm like, okay, I got to stop doing this, right? So you want to be mindful that you are there to help the families. You are not there to be a visitor. You do want to make a friend, but not one that wants you to come over every day, all right? We are here to serve and we have a lot of people that need our help. It is important to be mindful of the time. And you want to give your full attention to the person that you are sitting with, all right? Um, it does not make any sense to sit there and be thinking about the next door or thinking about the next appointment or thinking about what's going on at home or thinking about the bills that need to be paid or anything, right? Other than what is going on with that person in front of you. You truly, truly want to have a heart to serve. You want to love on those people, like the family members that you care about. You want to love on them, okay? And you can only love on somebody if you're really paying attention to them, if you're really there to serve, okay? And that's our job is to serve. And when we're there blessing those clients, we, in turn, we get blessed, all right? And that's our job. Okay, um, I'm not sure. Can everybody else hear me? Anthony, you're, it's something on your end. You're going to have to um, check your audio. So you may want to, um, well, he can't hear me, so I'm, I'm, I don't know why I'm talking. Lee, you might want to let him know to, um, to go out and come back in. I'll remove him and he can come back in. All right. And he just needs to know that when he comes in, he needs to select... Um, audio to log in with the audio. All right. So again, people buy from people buy from people they like. All right. Now let's go ahead and jump right into door knocking, guys. We're into the meat and potatoes of this presentation. We can't have a presentation if we can't get in the door, right? There's no way. Right. So we. Amen. Yes. Preach. Who's speaking? Somebody have a question? Go ahead, Lee. I see your hand raised. You. Yes, I do have my hand raised. What's going on? Hi, everybody. I just wanted to um, add a quick comment. Yes. That's okay? Yes. Okay. So you had mentioned uh, <clears throat> be clean. We were talking about, um, you know, just being presentable. I wanted to share it with everybody. <laughs> A story. This is the first time I really met Christine. Like oh. met Christine. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, I was a brand new agent. He was just full of life and vivaciousness. Um, I was just still learning. Had on my green shirt. Of course, my I, I came from an elementary school background, so wearing pantyhose and heels was nothing out of the ordinary tucked in like I, I, I typically dress up because of my former job but anyway I met Christine we used to have to mail out our applications at the UPS <laughs> the, the post office 
I met with Christine. She showed me a lot. She showed me how to do my calculations. It was just like on the spot training. I was just there to meet her, to hand off my applications. She took the time. She noticed my fingernail polish. This, what you see tonight? <sighs> The lesson was all on or all off. Girl, don't you know the client said small details? That lesson has never left me. And when you have someone who is concerned about you, um, they're gonna tell you the truth. Yeah. So being clean, like for the females, like polish all on or all off. Yeah. Or um, another thing was like, the cracked cell phone screens and the raggedy cases. Mm -hmm. That is about presentation just as well. Yes. So I wanted to, that's yes. all I got. Yes. Thank you for that ad. Um, it, it's the truth, you know, all on or all off, you know, don't come in. And, and the main thing, especially even with men as well, those nails need to be cut and clean. It's, it's presenting when you're pointing at a form, people are looking at your hands. They need to be in order. You know, that's, if you're not taking care of yourself, how are you going to take care of their business? And we have to think about that. And it doesn't even matter what these people's homes look like or anything else. Trust and believe they are looking at you, right? Because you're asking for the check. So you need to have that thing in order. Thank you for sharing that, Lee. That is hilarious. And, uh, you know, I'm big on that cell phone case too, because, um, yes, they're looking at your cell phone. If you're, I mean, you can get a phone on Amazon, a case on Amazon for what, five, seven dollars, right? You can go to that five and below store and get a case. Um, they're everywhere. There really should be no reason why your things are not in order. All right. Now a crack phone and you, you know, you don't have that $900 to get that phone fixed. Take a calculator in, in the uh, house with you <laughs> and it'll be all right. It'll be all right. Cause I've been there, trust and believe. Had that phone up to my chest, like y'all not looking at none of these cracks. Um, but yes, you just want to make sure that things are in order. So yes, yeah, so and now let's go ahead. Thank you for that ad, Miss Lee. We're gonna jump into this door knocking because once again, if you don't get in the door, you can't do the presentation, and we can't help anybody if we don't see anybody, right? So um, let's jump right in. And I do believe that we have Rahim Il that's gonna help us uh, start out this section of door knocking. Yes, awesome, awesome. Good evening once again. And Chrissy, if you can um, turn down your speakers just a little bit so I don't hear myself with the echo. All right. Uh, well, good evening again, everybody. And I'm very excited to talk about this topic because this is it, right? If you do not get in the door, if you cannot... Um, hold their attention on that initial hello on the phone. Doesn't matter if you do a really good presentation and they are separate. They are definitely separate. Um, there's there's a, a mindset. Uh, I think that it would be good if I would start there. Um, when you approach the door, when you approach your day, you, you it, it, would, it would benefit you greatly if you would start out with the mindset, like I am going to get in every door that I get a uh, knock on. I am going to help everybody that I sit down with. I am here to conquer type of mindset. You could put your own wording, but that's the mindset that you want to carry. And it will come out. So in the previous business, um, and those of you that have been on the conference calls, as a matter of fact, recently, I think it was last week, uh, Mr. Miles, he mentioned that, um, Myself and Sean Hall, he's uh, one of you guys' partners as well. Uh, he, he's not on here this evening, but you will meet Sean. Um, he's an amazing agent. He's an amazing manager. Um, he has, um, he's one of the um, agents who's produced over $20,000 in production, the most in TMG. Um, I'm talking month in, month out. Um, his his pay through is uh, two digits in a comma. Um, we were in the previous business together and this amazing person I just described was so scared to knock on people's doors that we, we had crews that we managed and I would be literally on one side of town with my crew. 
he would literally be on another side of town with his crew and he would beg me. And when I say beg, I'm talking beg. You have no idea, man, I'm out here. I've been all day and I'm having a hard time out here. And I'm like, Sean, you just have to, you know, and he, he was too much up here. Remember I said, it's mindset, right? And his mindset was his issue. It wasn't, we, we both had the same script. We, we, I would go to the same areas and get him in, right? But the difference was the confidence. It was, it was the mindset. It was the attitude that I walked up to the doors with. Um, we were walking up to a uh, home selling um, a very high-end product. And I was, I was getting into those clients' homes with cases of soda, with rolls of paper towels that had absolutely nothing to do with why we were there. It was just something, here's a gift for, for you to allow us to come into your home and talk to you about these other things. And um, he really struggled with that, right? Here in this instance, um, know that you're, you're, you're knocking on the door of somebody who reached out to Lincoln. You're not going up with paper towels. You don't, you're not going up with a case of soda. Um, and, and you almost have an invitation, right? In the sense that they've requested. So know that, but also know that you're probably going to run into some resistance as soon as you knock on the door, as soon as they come out to the door. Anticipate that. That's where our job begins, right? So when we're approaching the door, because this is what you wanted me to talk about, um, or what I said that I would talk about, uh, when I get out of my car, uh, what you don't want to appear as, you're going to be in these people's houses for the rest of your life, right? You have an iPad under this arm. You got your, your briefcase here. You, you got like, you know, you're, you're just walking up to the door so bogged down. It's like, oh, I'm only going to be five minutes. They take one look at all that stuff that you're carrying. It's like, man, you ain't going to be here for five minutes or 15 minutes. So you, I want to appear that way, right? So when I walk up to the door, I have uh, my iPad in my hand. I have a wood grain uh, brochure. If you haven't seen them, you will. It's basically the brochure that explains our customer support services. Um, I have that inside of my iPad. Um, like I have a keyboard and an iPad and it's closed in the middle. I also have a few of my business cards in there. Why? Because I'm going to sell them. My business cards are only for the people who I write. So I have business cards in there. I have the vine, I mean the uh, the, the wood grain uh, portfolio in there, and that's it. That's it. Sometimes I forget the wood grain. Sometimes I forget my wallet because I don't want to go to the door with too much. It's nothing wrong with saying, "Hey, Michelle, you know what? I am so sorry. Thank you so much for this. Congratulations. I'm glad I was able to help you set this up." But you're going to need to get a hold of me someday, right? And she said, yeah. So let me, let me run and go get my car. I, I didn't even think that you were going to be home because there was no car in your driveway. I'll be right back. And I'll go get my business card. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the, the main thing I'm trying, I want to get across is the initial hello at the door is, is very light. Um, door knock, what you carry to the door. Um, Okay, and then did you want to do some 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 uh, like a like a role play at the door, Chrissy? Okay, absolutely, we can definitely do that. Okay, um, there's only a few objections that we're going to get, which is a beautiful thing if you think about it, right? Because we don't need to know how to overcome a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to hear things like, "I need, I, I uh, thought I was going to get something in the mail." Um, I don't like people just showing up to my house. Um, I just wanted a quote. Can you just tell me how much it is for $10,000? That's really the only things that we're going to hear at the door, or it's a bad time. I was just about to go to the store, right? All of those things are okay. And again, going back to something I said a little bit ago, anticipate those things, right? And so I, I walk up to a door, um, I have my, my iPad in my hand. Um, I, I, I don't do doorbells. If somebody has one of those ring doorbells, I have one, right? I don't touch them. I don't touch those things. I want to knock on their door. 
And I want to knock in a way that I'm not going to do that. Who do I sound like? The popo. <laughs> I don't want I don't want to piss nobody off, right? First impression is everything. And we don't get a second chance to do it. So I'm going to knock on the door with the if you guys could hear that. Dun, 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 dun. It's a fun, it's a fun knock. And they're like, who? Who the you know, so they're coming to the door like, and so the lady comes to the door and it's Chrissy. I have the lead. I don't know how I forgot that. I'll have the lead on top of my iPad, not inside. So this is on the outside. As soon as they come to the door, I'm going to go with that. So Chrissy, are you unmuted? Yep, I'm unmuted. Awesome, awesome. So I'll knock on your door. Girl, somebody's at the door. Did you hear that? If you don't answer the door. door. <laughs> Michelle, Hello? please pray for me. Hey, are you Christine? Yes. Yeah. So glad you're here. Do you know you're harder to get a hold of than Osama bin Laden probably was? Here all the time. I don't know and what I you're talking about. Hold on. I laugh. They laugh. But let me tell you guys a funny story. One time I said that to a lady. She was just plain dressed. And her son was in the background and he was a Muslim and he didn't think that that was too cool. <laughs> I did write him though. I did write him. But my, what's the point? The point is you want to catch, here's, here's the deal guys on, on your typical day, we have to understand who's, who's door, who's behind the door, who's behind the door. Let's just be generally speaking. You generally will have a husband and wife, generally speaking, who they woke up on Monday. Um, they yelled at the kids a million times for them to get up to get on their school computer or to get out to the bus to go to school. They, the, the wife gets the husband out. She goes to work if, if, she bo if they both go. Um, they come home, help with the homework, uh, fix a meal, watch, it, watch a series. Um, they go to bed to do guess what the following day. Over and thing. over and over and over. It's the same thing, right? And then they have people who call them uh, from Mothers Against Drunk Driving to a minute ago. I didn't even want to answer my phone. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about with the political stuff. I was getting calls every day from the Republican Party, the Democratic Party. It was, it was nonstop. And somewhere in between, there cannot be this Mr. Boring, this Mrs. Boring agent who comes to their door. Don't be corporate, not at the door. That's not where you want to be corporate. You want to be corporate after you get in. And, you know, um, it has to be personality at the door. I have to want to uh, invite, let's see, um, Myra. I have to want to invite her into my home, right? So to welcome her into my house, she, I, I wasn't expecting her. This might not have been an appointment. I don't do appointments at all. I just go, I knock on the door, I'm kicking their door down. That's, that's me, right? But even if it was an appointment, you want to, you want to, you have a split second to get on these people's good side, a split second, your smile, the pep in your step and what you say to them as soon as that door opens up. I do things like I'll lean on their railing. Do you know how long it took for me to get to your house? That's my hello. I don't even say who I am. I don't say why I'm there. Do you know how long it took? And they're looking at me like, hell no, I don't know how long it took for you to get to my house. I don't even know who you are. Sir, I am so sorry. Forgive me. My car's out of gas, I'm out of breath. Look at all these steps I just had to walk up. And then they're laughing at this point. And I'm like, no, I'm kidding. My name is Raheem, I'm with the Funeral Advantage Program, sir. But I did come all the way from Pittsburgh to help you out. You sent in this request for our final expense program. You received the flyer in the mail and, and they kind of always give you the little fuzzy glazed over look. And, they, and I just show them if there is handwriting like this lead, let me look at myself so I can make sure. Okay, 
So if you notice on this lead, all of, except for this at the top, those are my notes, but all of this stuff on here is from the client. Their age is handwritten, their phone number is handwritten. It's checked off on the block that they want this information as soon as possible. So I show them that. And I love this one. It says, please send information in the mail. So this is a person that doesn't want anybody calling them, I guess, right? And I'll say, well, we were going to call you, but you said you wanted something in the mail. And due to COVID, I'm here, you know, I'm here. Well, I, do, I wanted something in the mail. It, it's, it says that on there. Ma'am, we saw that on there. They tried to put me in an envelope. Look at me. I'm six foot. I'm 210 pounds. You know how much you would have had to pay for shipping? Listen, it's only going to take me about five minutes. I promise I'll be out of your hair real quick. I got a few of your neighbors to go see uh, as soon as I get done with you. Where can we sit? And then you just go, right? So come on, Chrissy. So we're... And you can hit me with a rebuttal or two, and I'll tell you how I deal with them, and we can go into the next piece. I don't know why people keep knocking on our door. I don't know who that is. Girl, uh, yes, can I help you? Yes, ma'am. Are you, you don't look like Ted. <laughs> no. Ted, I guess, is your husband? Yeah, um, yes. Mm -hmm. What did he do oh, now? Okay. It, he didn't do anything, trust me, not this time anyway. Oh, okay. he, he, unless this is your handwriting, this is one of the bottom half of our flyers. I'm with Lincoln Heritage Life Insurance Company. Mm -hmm. He requested some some information from us. Uh, is he here right now? He is. He is definitely here. She's, that's Ted right there. Yeah, he's definitely here. I said it. All he's right. here. Oh, uh, good stuff. Hey, sir, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. They said you got to be special. They sent me up here all the way from Pittsburgh to go over the information that you requested about our final expense program. Were you looking for coverage for you, for her, for both of you? Who, who is it that we're trying to kill? In the mail. I was looking for it in the mail. You were looking for it in the mail? Yeah. They tried to put me in an envelope, but I'm a little bit too big. <laughs> no, they, we, we offer day one coverage. Usually the policies that you get through the mail, you're not covered for two or three years. And in order for us to offer you that type of benefit, the state requires that we see you. I see you. It just takes me a couple of minutes to explain a benefit. You're probably going to have some questions. Is it, can we sit on, in there or you want to come outside? It's pretty warm out here today. You can come in. <laughs> I can come in? Yeah. I wipe my feet as I'm asking that because I'm coming in. I'm coming in. And then there you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's telling Any the truth. That I, I hear him on the phone all the time saying that saying the same thing he does the same thing every time if it ain't broke every time and i just laugh he gets right into it every time make them say yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he's he's light you know what i mean so he's not coming to the door um with the script so to speak but he does we learned that we paid 250 dollars for that part of the script several years ago yes. And what'd you say? I was agreeing. Yeah, yeah. We, we paid for that. <laughs> and you guys actually get that free. But, you know, it's the same thing over and over. The difference is personality. The difference is paying attention to the individual at the door, you know, reading their body language, right? Um, and addressing them accordingly. So yes, he's doing the play, but then it's, you know, oh, you know, he did you guys send it in just for yourself or for you and another loved one? Then we want to go into these other questions, right? Um, any questions, comments about what he went over as far as this first example of door knocking? Okay, so um, I was just going to add that when I'm door knocking, I try to like my stance, it's not a forward stance like shows aggression I always make sure I sort of step to the side like my clipboard is like here so we're unengaging with them this way yes okay. that's a very good point I even I'm, I'm so glad that you brought that up Lee especially as men um, when you're knocking on the door of a senior's home or a woman's home even a man um, 
we as men and, and ladies, you have your own finessing to do as well, because these things are important. These are those unspoken, uh, the nonverbals, if you will, that do speak volumes. You know, somebody opens, if I knock on her door and she came out and I'm like right there at the screen, you know, that's that's kind of an aggressive situation. I purposely step back as soon as I hear hear them coming to the door and I'm back here. And, and like Lee said, I lean in to show them the their handwriting and why I'm here. I step back again, only gonna take me about five minutes. Where can we sit? Um, that's that's very good. I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, any quest other questions? I wanted to bring up one more point, but did anybody um, else have any other questions? Yeah, I just have ahead. one small add that I was definitely going to add to that. I'm glad Lee did speak on that as well, because there's been a study on um, even men to men whenever, whether a, a female to a male or a man to a man is going to be in front of each other, shoulder to shoulder up, it, it, it's like a challenge. Like that's a challenge. And they said that even with spouses, if we would learn how to like sit next to each other on a couch and have that conversation, it would go over better than if we were face to face, mm -hmm. right? It's amazing how that's so true. And women, we want to be shoulder to shoulder, front to front. Like we, we're all in it, and and it's not an it's not a threat. It's more a respect thing, and it's more of you know we we want to be all the way in tune. But that does not work for the men. So yes, you know I always turn to the side when I'm at the door, have my you know leaning in, being humble to the individuals. So absolutely, absolutely, I love that. And go ahead, Raw. Go ahead with what you wanted to add. Um, just, just, and this will be my last piece, unless somebody else has any questions or a little bit later on, if I chime in on something else. But um, one thing I did a training for TMG uh, years ago. And one thing that I like to, um, it's kind of like going back to what I was saying, as far as their day being so mundane and we, we do the same things day in and day out. And you want to interrupt that day and be the spark of their day. You know, that you we should be leaving their homes and they're like, you know what? I'm really glad that you came. I, I just had a gentleman the other day. He hugged me and cried on my shoulders. God is my witness. I prayed with this guy, his wife. Um, I forget their ages. They're in their 70s and um, she has Alzheimer's. They went to Georgia for vacation and she got sick. She got COVID. And she's fine with COVID though now, um, but they came back and since they've been back from Georgia, he hasn't seen her. He was having a meeting today to see if they were gonna release her um, from the nursing home. And he said, you know what? I, I felt horrible all day today and you came and I'm literally speaking verbatim what he was saying to me. And um, those, those, I mean, that's, he, he got a policy. I don't care if it was a million dollar policy or I didn't sell him at all. It's those type of interactions that I'm talking yes. about. And had I not been able to, I, I, amen Lee, had I not, had I not been able to um, um, get on his level and relate to this gentleman, he was an older white guy. I'm a younger black guy. Um, he's, um, we, we're like completely different, completely different, but we had a lot in common. Um, he, this guy was crazy about his wife and, and, and I told him about Chrissy and um, he, the tears, I'm telling you the tears just, boom, just shot down this guy's face. It's from making that connection. Um, and in high schools, this is what I was talking about when I mentioned the training I did years ago um, and in high schools, right? Somewhere before COVID, there was a high school, you name it neighborhood. They put on Romeo and Juliet, The Lion King as a play. You got that same play on Broadway. Which one do you think brings the boom? The high school performance or the Broadway, right? So you wanna be that Broadway. You know, when, when you get out of your car, you knock on that door, you, you're on that phone, it's, it's game time, it's action. And that's where, um, that kind of one of the things that I was kind of alluding to in the beginning. And that's the uh, last thing I wanted to add on that, Chrissy. Awesome, awesome. Hope that makes sense. Thank you, Raheem. Can I jump in? You did yeah. a, mm. Christine had talked about having a heart to serve. That man yeah. just didn't open up to Raheem. 
The heart to serve means she also mentioned about paying attention. You gotta be a good listener. I mean, you're talking to seniors. I know I had a special relationship with my grandparents, so you gotta automatically hopefully love that type of population. Mm -hmm. like, love mm -hmm. a child, children, or like old folks is our thing. Yeah, if old folks isn't your thing, you better make them your thing. <laughs> okay. So paying attention means listening intently. Like I wasn't there, but I could only imagine how a man who's totally opposite with everything that's going on in the world and what he might see of the average black guy, he felt Raheem's heart. Yes. Yeah. There's a part of it. It was a this, priceless moment, oh, I'm telling you, I promise. Yeah, um, it's the ministry kind of part. It's the loving on people part. That is, that's what it looks like when it comes to fruition. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Nice job. Absolutely. Um, one small story that I remember in the beginning when I was still crazy. And I mean crazy. <laughs> you will change in this business if you know better, right? Um, I remember having uh, Raheem and I, we was having, we was going through it. We was going through it this day. Y'all, y'all know y'all in relationships, you understand sometimes you go through it. And I remember I was leaving the house and I had this appointment with this little 82 year old lady, um, bless her heart. And I parked all the way up on the hill so that I can walk down just so that I could um, just cool off a little bit, right? I had made sure my, my makeup was good. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, wanted to make sure my makeup and everything was okay. And um, <laughs> let me tell you, it wasn't, it wasn't okay. Um, I knocked on that lady's door. I think I'm off the camera, but I knocked on this lady's door and she put her whole hand in my face. And she said, whatever it is that you're dealing with, you leave that out there. You leave it out outside. And I'm thinking, I, my wig was on perfect. My makeup was on great. And I swear, I, I wore a lot of wigs. And, you know, everything was good. I'm thinking, what is she talking about? I did, like gave praises to God. And I'm like, I'm going to do my job. To, I'm going to deal with that when I get home, you know, push through. And um, she felt that whole, at the door, she felt that energy on me, right? And I know better because I feel energy all the time. But. I didn't think that other people was able to feel it like I feel it, right? And she said, when you come in here, all I wanna hear about is this insurance. And if it wasn't for my niece who told me that you were really good and that I needed to get this covered, you would not be coming in my house. I don't know what's going on with you and I don't care. And I will never forget that. Now me, her name is Gloria. Me and Miss Gloria are super cool. You know, I had been in her house several times since, had coffee and cookies um, and, she would just like, listen, you know, when you feel bad or you have a migraine or something, you stay home. I was cracking up, but she was right. She was right. And it's one of those things that we do talk about the, the number, the top 10 ways in order for us to be successful. The green print is get right with God, get right with your family, and then you go to work, right? And that's in that order. And that's how, how everything works out. I'll never forget that. You know, never forget that she was, um, <laughs> she was a firecracker for sure, for sure. Um, anyone else want to talk, want to tap into this door knocking before, um, I do what I'm about to do on oh, once, twice. No. Okay, great. Um, yeah. I have, yes, Ty, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Real, real fast. Um, I just want to reiterate, first of all, great job, Raheem, and, and great uh, presentation, uh, Zoom training, Chrissy, getting everybody together. Good to see you, Michelle. Hey, um, and everybody else on the call. First, I want to reiterate, really important, to don't forget to, don't forget to record yourself. That, a lot of times, a lot of the newer ages fail to remember that, get so excited, and I got a lot of anxious uh, mo uh, moments and, inside your head. Don't forget to record yourself. It's the first, it's the one thing you can do to self-correct. You don't always have to let your manager listen to all your recordings. You can listen to them yourself and you listen to, you'll really know if you would 
if you would have bought it, if you would have got yourself, if you would have let yourself in the door based on your conversation you had at the door, you can do a lot of self-correcting when you listen to your recordings. Um, and be very mindful of the mindset. You, you, you can't, uh, like Chrissy was just saying a moment ago, when you walk into it with all that, everything going on, the, the weight of the world, whatever it might be going on, uh, health or, or family and emotions, whatever it might be, so you have sometimes you have to take some time off, but be very, very mindful of what's going on in here so that it doesn't show on your face and your enthusiasm and your energy and your smile can get you in. So if you're having a lot of things going on at home, you have to leave it there or stay home until your mindset is a little bit more in point. And um, a lot of times when I'm on the porch and, and when I'm walking through the community, I'll take note of bridges, landmarks, uh, the street I'm driving down the road, the porch, the driveway, the well manicured lawn, the porch furniture, anything I can do, anything that might kind of stand out that might give me something to talk about for a split second before I start talking about why I'm there. Um, especially like if it's a really nice looking house or something that really stands, oh wow, what a beautiful driveway you guys have. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm so talkative and I didn't, let me get down to why I'm here, right? And whether it's weather conversation to break some ice, and a lot of times I will wear glasses. Don't be afraid to change things up. Sometimes I wear glasses and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll knock differently and sometimes I'll not. You have to be, don't be afraid to try different things to see what method might be getting you in more. And, and, and she talked about that, I think I caught the very end of it, um, the importance of your grooming. Men, if you, if you, I think it's really important for guys to maintain, grow the beard, keep it neat. Whatever you do, keep it neat. I don't think it's, I don't, I don't think all that scruffiness going on down here and these crazy beers that are, un, that are not well kept. We're in sales, don't forget that. Um, and if, as far as ladies and wearing tight clothes and things like that, be very, very mindful of your gear. And that's all I got for now. Great job. Awesome, awesome. And, and Ty actually started to tap into the, um, the next step, the next uh, level, if you will. But before we do that, I'm gonna look at my whole screen and I wanna see who wants to do the door knock script. Who wants to knock in? Who wants to have at it? Just unmute your phone and speak up. I'll go ahead and do it. Come on, Michelle, let's go. And you can, you can, you can knock in with um, Raheem or Lee. Lee unmuted, knock in with Lee. Okay. Can we start now? Yeah. Okay. Hi, can I help you? Hi, Miss Lee. How are you? I'm so glad I caught you at home. Oh my goodness. I'm Michelle. I'm here because I have your request that you mail in. Um, was this for you or for you and another loved one? Request? What is yes. That? So we sent you in a flyer in the mail. You tore it off and filled it out and you sent it back in. You put down that your number is the uh, 216-55584 right here. Yeah, yeah that's my handwriting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's okay. You know, a lot of people I come across, they don't remember sending this in. I don't even remember what I cooked last week, but it only takes about five minutes for us to go through. Where can we sit? Okay. Um, right now, I wasn't too sure if I was like a lot of people to come on in the house because of the, the Rona. Right, right. I completely, completely understand. We are able to do this over the phone. Um, I have your number right here. Let me go ahead and call you and get you on the phone. I can go on my card and we can do this right over the phone. It still will only take about five or 10 minutes to go through and we can get you uh, together today. Okay. Are you calling me tomorrow or right now? No, I'm gonna call you right now. I'm gonna go. Oh, I right. To, yeah, I'm about to dial your phone. Don't no, give my. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very I'll good. Wait. Okay. Very good. Very very good. Now that was a nice spin on it. You know, I didn't I didn't know what was gonna come out of it. Um, you flipped it to not wanting somebody to come in the house, although Lee takes pictures all the time in the homes with her clients. So she is getting in the homes, right? right? But she, she flipped it on us a little bit with the, 
talking about the pandemic because that may be something that somebody says, right? And so that was good that you was able to just come back and say, hey, I, this is your phone number. I'm gonna sit in a car right now. You know, those of you that are already on our group me, you're able to see the pictures and the posts of agents when they're out riding and things of that nature. And like Raheem, he had just had one um, yesterday where you could see he was at the screen door with the lady signing the form. And so he had did that in the car and then just had her sign um, through the doorway. So you, you are going to have to be creative, um, especially during this time, but it's just doing your job. They need it. We're here to help them, period. Anyone else want to try it? We're on here to speak up, to try to be uncomfortable. Y'all got to start calling names. What are we going to do? Anybody want to try to door knock? It's real simple. Hi, are you so-and-so? My name is Christine. I'm from Lincoln Heritage here to go over this information you requested. Was this for yourself or for you and another loved one? That's what I say immediately at the door. Was it for you or you and another loved one? I'm asking a question, okay? And I'm shaking my head like, <laughs> because at this point, most of the time they'll say, oh, well, that was just for me. Oh, okay, great. Well, I'm glad I caught you home. Where can we sit? It's going to take about 10 minutes. And I, I always on my clipboard, I will have the clipboard. I have the copy of the lead piece, the lead that they filled out right here. And I will have several of the leads behind it. Because my whole point is, I have several people to see in the area. I promise I'm not going to take up too much of your time. Where can we sit? Okay. Um, Raheem had stated he just carries his iPad at the door and the lead. I carry the iPad. I do carry a folder. We get all of this free from Lincoln, right? Um, in the folder, I have the My Final Wish little booklet in here and it's a love letter that they leave to their clients gets all their stuff in order the what everyone needs to know about funeral booklet and the wood grain that raheem talked about and we'll look at that a little bit later but that is in my folder that i because i like to leave um paper because i'm i'm a paper queen so i like to leave my paper and that's it no purse no bags i'll have an id badge on if i remember to bring it but that's it right nice and simple and i'm just letting them know that I'm gonna be in and out, okay? Lee, why don't you tell us how you are, how you door knock? What's your door knock? Um, okay. I have on, um, I'll use a real loud example. Just okay. Actually have. Okay, so I sent out my text messages to my leads, mm -hmm. um, made some phone calls, in an attempt to either obviously close with a telesale or if it's somebody who wants me to come out there, then I will. Or if, if there's an issue with the telephone number and I know I have to door knock them anyway. So it was a guy who actually called me back. Um, we set an appointment. Um, I don't know. He was real ignorant to me over the phone and ended up hanging up. So I was like, all right, Mr. Jim, I'll be back at you in a couple of days. <laughs> so a couple of days passed. I pulled up around the same time that he told me because he told me what time he get off of work. And he told me what time he's normally home. So sometimes you'll get shut down. But as long as you got the information you need, it doesn't matter. I'll get back to you. I pulled up. His door was open. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so I had on um, my mask and I had this other, you know, face shield on that I'm trying out just to, um, you know, let the senior knows, the seniors know that I'm following protocol, just like the other nurses and stuff that they have coming into their homes, you know, so he came to the door and um, I wasn't door knocking him as if it was a cold leak because I'd already had texted them. And I basically said, I'm the girl you hung up on. <laughs> I had the lead. He was like, ah. I sort of gave him back, like, you know. <laughs> so he was chewing food and uh, I'm a veteran. I said, I understand. I'm nodding, smiling under this hot mess. 
I took the mask down, I still had on the shield. Mr. Jim, thank you for your service. However, when you sent this in, you probably realized that your DD-214 wasn't gonna cover everything. That's why I'm here. Yes. So at this point, he knew I wasn't like just walking away. You're not going to just dog me out in this neighborhood, are you? <laughs> <laughs> in the cold, cause that was yesterday. Oh, you did wrong. But that. his his um his thing went down. Mm -hmm. Um, we did. Now that time wasn't good. I was still trying to get in there, but he seems to be the type of person who gets home from work and does the same thing. Mm -hmm. I can just tell. So I kind of gave him his space um, as far as going to the um, car and trying to set an appointment. I was still firing off all like, how can I set it up to, to keep him in the moment? I ended up having to reschedule with him. And so sometimes it's just about planting the seed. I've, I've sold a lot of policies just by knowing when to kind of fall back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He might be a dude where, I mean, he still, the report was still there. So yeah. sometimes just that see and setting up the next event. I, ha I had to learn that one of my um, former managers and that was a good lesson. You could set up the next event. So um, yeah. that's what I would say. I would just say, just be yourself, mm -hmm. be sincere, you know? And like I said, I stand to the side. Hi, I always lead with a smile. My name is Lee. I'm with the Funeral Advantage. Thank you so much for reaching out to us. Or if it's a man who answers the door, I will assume that's Mr. Rahim. Right. If it's a lady, I'm going to assume, hi, Christine. I'm Lee, I'm with the Funeral Advantage and I'm showing them the handwriting and I'm sort of, and they'll look and, you know, so um, it's about asserting yourself and um, that's all I got. Awesome. I need one more person mm -hmm. to, to, to have at it. Give me one more person. I'll try, Christine. I'm going to try. Come on, honey. Who's that? Miss Cookie? Yes. Let's I'm go. going to try. Good. Okay. Lee, you can help her out. I'm here. All right. Okay. Okay, Miss Lee, you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Who is it? Hi, my name is Natalia Lucian. I'm with Lincoln Heritage. I'm looking for Miss Lee. Who? Natalia Lucian with Lincoln Heritage. I'm here because you requested information about our funeral advantage program. H hold on. So I'm going to open the screen. Say that Hi, again. Lee. Hi. Hi, I'm glad I caught you today. I'm here because you requested information about our Funeral Advantage program. And I drove all the way from Indianapolis just to come see you. You must be special. I'm babysitting right now, sugar. Okay, well, did you requested this information. Was it for yourself or for another loved one? That was for me and my husband. Okay, well, it'll just take about 10 minutes for me to explain. I won't be long. Uh, can I come in? Can we, can I sit? Can I come in and have a seat or we could talk outside? Okay, let me get my coat. I'm gonna come on outside. Hold okay, Miss Lee. Very good. Very, very good. Um, the only thing I would say, Miss Cookie, is I would not, you sounded like you were scared. Like you was like, oh my God, they're gonna kill me. But I noticed the first time you even spoke up on Zoom. So Great job, yeah. great job. And you know, it's a matter of where can we sit? Not yes or no. Can answer. we sit? Can we sit? No, we can't. Never, ever, right? It's a where, you know, it's only going to take where five to 10 sit? minutes. Where can we sit? You know, and you're, you're already looking as though you're ready to come on in. Where can we sit, right? Um, that was great. I loved it. I was trying to find a, um, a recording on, I'll pull it up in a minute. I'll find it, um, but good. 
Good, good, good. Nice putting some stuff together. I just love this little girl. All right. So we're going to go ahead and jump onto the next section because now we have gotten into the door. We are in the home, y'all. We are in the home. All right. Now, Ty kind of, he, he kind of tiptoed in when you get in the house. Now what? Right. He said, when you're walking up, you're going to be paying attention to the different vehicles in the neighborhood, the cars that might be in the driveway, looking at the, the home, if there's flowers or if the house is kept up, you're kind of looking at different things to try to find something that you can connect with. All right. So for myself, I will say I am not into sports. I am, I love everything, but I'm not into much of any of those things enough to hold a long conversation, right? What I am into is people. I am into feelings and health and things like that. So my, my way, and I mean, I love, you know, I'm female. I like things that are beautiful. So that's easy, but sometimes it's hard to find some beautiful things in some, um, some of these clients situations. Right. And then I don't want to come in with, I feel bad about a person either because, you know, uh, you just don't want to do that. But I always tie into the person, right? I am very much dealing with the communication, the body language, what they look like, what they sound like from the door. I mean, literally from the door, right? And so when I get in, I'm all the way. Thank you so much for letting me in. And I'm looking, I'm spinning around looking to see if there's anything in there that I could, oh my God, that is beautiful. If it's a, if I've seen this, this cross in this guy's home, he didn't have no legs at all, but he had this beautiful cross and it was gorgeous, handmade wood. He had five of them. He ended up giving me three of them. I ended up giving them to three other people on the way out of the apartment building. I'll never forget him, but I had to find something because he came to the door and you know, some things I've never seen somebody who had just had an amputation done and it's still a little, you know, bloody, like you almost can't not stare at it. So I had to like look at something else and that's what you have to be mindful of. And so I'm going to ask the individual, so how are you feeling today? If they're limping, you know, oh, I see you have a limp. Did you always have a limp? Did you have like, you know, hip surgery or knee surgery? People love to talk about themselves. And when you're talking to them and being hundred percent in tune with that individual, it's amazing. You really do make friends in the business. You really do get connected with some, with some folk. And, um, that's what I do. I connect with the people. Oh man, I'm so glad that you was home. You know, it's been crazy out here lately. Um, you know, and I'm looking again, I control the home. When I'm in there, I'm controlling that house. That TV's too loud. I will blame it on me, right? Oh my God, Miss Jones, listen, do you mind if I turn that down? Where's that remote? Oh, it's over there. I'm gonna turn that down because I'm gonna be in here watching TV and I need to help you today. Is that all right? And they laugh, right? Or I'll say, can you mind if you turn that off or put that on mute? I need to have your full attention because I have about 30 people in here that they have me to see today, right? They, I have about 30 people. So I'm not going to take too long. I'm letting them know from the beginning, I, I'm not here to eat, to drink, nothing. I'm here to help you and I'm out of here because I have too many people to see. And it already took me too long to get to you. So I'm so glad that you let me in the house. Now, that's being my warm and fuzzy, talking to them about themselves, finding where we're going to sit down. My tone is already warm. So I'm connecting just in that, right? And then we're sitting down. Hey, you know what? And I, and I do tell people, if I see that they've been sitting in their little lounge chair, they have their little coffee already set up there and their cigarette or whatever, it looks like you were sitting over there and you were comfortable. You know what? Go ahead and have a seat right there. I'm going to sit right here. I do know that a lot of managers and a lot of people say go to the kitchen table because that's where people do business. And I'm sure that there are some studies that say that that is the case, but a lot of folk do the business on the couch. And I've been on people sitting on the edge of their bed talking to them because they're in their room and they like to watch the TV and everything else in their room. I'm coming in, right? And I want to be where you are comfortable to be able to handle this business. I don't want you to be uncomfortable, right? So you have to feel out that client. You're gonna know if you look over and you see in that kitchen that they have all that paperwork, envelopes and stuff, we need to go to the kitchen because that's obviously where they do their business, 
But if you see that they have those bills and stuff on the side of that little couch, and I know you, you life insurance agents know what I'm talking about. They got that stack sitting there where they sit. They do their business sitting right there while they're watching TV. Let's go ahead and handle business. All right. And again, this is why I carry a clipboard. I don't need your table. I don't need you to clear anything away. All you need to do is sign right here, right here on, the, on you know, my clipboard when I do paper apps. All right. Um, the note on here is you do not want to rush into that presentation, but you don't want to take too long to get started. You do not want to take too long. If they're starting to get into this rabbit hole of these stories, you don't want to cut them off, but it's like, oh my God, you know what? And I've said it to clients and I really meant it. Man, I could sit in here and talk with you all day, but you're not going to get me in trouble today. Listen, I need to make sure I get over this information. I got about 25 more people to see while I'm out here in three days, right? And it's true. And I'm like, you, you do text messages, I'll text you later. And I will text them later. I have no problem with that. I was texting a client earlier today and I had to tell her, listen, I'm driving, right? <laughs> I have one, Miss Dorothy, she does couponing. So when she finds good deals, she sends me messages and I appreciate her, right? Um, so you will make friends with a lot of the clients and that is okay, but you need to protect them and their family first, all right? Any managers want to jump in on this setting it up? And again, when I set the agenda, it's here, I'm here to take care of you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and ask you a few questions because I wanna make sure that I can get you qualified today. All right, I don't wanna waste your time. And I'm only gonna talk to you about what you qualify for and answer any questions that you have. And then we're gonna make sure that we get a plan set up for you today, okay? That's me setting that agenda. Any other managers wanna speak up on that or any agent wanna speak up on your getting in that home, getting warm and fuzzy and setting that agenda? Because all of this is part of that presentation. And I can't see you, so you have to just speak up if you're going to speak up. I think people appreciate the agenda because they have something to look forward to. Um, Ryan jokingly had mentioned about big old briefcases and things. Setting the agenda is like, okay, you have a progression. It's like going to church. You know, you're not sitting there all day long. It's going to be this, this, and this. You're like, okay, I know when it's over. Not that you want to rush through church or anything. <laughs> right. right. The agenda sets the framework mm -hmm. for being there. And, and the, you know, you're right. It sets that tone and it lets them know, okay, we do have an agenda. And I know, I, I thank goodness for a lot of the new agents that had came into this opportunity and told us and helped us understand that we needed to have a system that we needed to have scripts, right? Because in the beginning, we really were just like, okay, here's a, a flip chart and figure it out, right? But I'm one that I was in the house for two and three hours wondering why do I know everybody's name by heart and didn't help anybody, right? Because I love on people and I talk a lot, right? But I wasn't talking about what I needed to talk about. So I needed to have that, that transition to make it easy. And for me, it was like, hey, I have about 20 people I need to see. I, I, I would love to be in here with you all day talking about whatever it is we're talking about, but I can't, right? I do have a job to do and people are dying every day. So it's very important for me to be able to help you and to move on, all right? So that is our beginnings. Um, let me get back to that presentation, us getting in and getting warm. You gotta get warm before you get into your presentation, okay? So now we're jumping in to the power questions. Who can tell me what the power questions are? Several of you have already been going through this portal. You guys, I need y'all to speak up. I need y'all to speak up. Talk to me. I don't want to be the only one talking on here. Tell me what some of the power questions are. Anyone. Um, Except for the manager. We would ask. <laughs> Okay. All right, so, wait a minute, speak up and tell me, say your name. This is Rick. Um, okay. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, one of them is, um, is this application for you or someone else? And then uh, followed up by, it's usually due to um, recently losing a loved one, adding on to coverage or having no coverage at all and looking for some. 
Very good. Very good. Is that your guy, Raheem L? Very good. All right. I heard a lady's voice as well. I got you down. Oh, that was me. I was trying to ask you. Um, I was trying to get an understanding if it was questions to uh, the client. That's what yes. I, that was my only question. Yep. Okay. The power questions. There's there's about five to ten questions that are considered power questions that you need to know and what you want to ask during your um, conversation, your presentation with your clients. So we have, okay. is this for you or you and another loved one? We also have most people when they fill out this form, it's for one of three reasons, whether you have some life insurance and you need a little bit more, um, you don't have any life insurance and that's why we're here, or you just experienced a funeral, which one is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's two of them. Who else? Um, have you ever been diagnosed with HIV or AIDS? Would that is that a power be... question, but that's not one of the power questions. <laughs> okay. That is definitely one of the questions we need to know, but that's on yeah. the other Nope. Okay. Thank you for speaking up though. Any, any other ones? How about if you had to deal with a funeral in the last six months? Yes, David. Have you ever had to deal with a funeral? And then of course the follow-up to that is, did, if you don't mind me asking, who was it? And did they have any type of coverage? Did you have to help with the finances, right? You want to dig into that situation. And that is because we need to get to the feelings, to the heart of why we're here. We need to help them understand why we are here. Help them remember why they filled out that form. Okay. Um, very good. What other questions do we have as power questions? Do you want to be buried or cremated? Buried or cremated. Why is that important to know? And figuring out the coverage amount. To figure out the coverage amount. Absolutely. Absolutely. What other questions are power questions? Uh, let's who's, again. Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, it would be who's taking care of um, when you pass, who's going to be taking out on the expenses. That's correct. Who's going to be that beneficiary? Who's gonna be the beneficiary? I heard another lady, I wasn't sure who it was. What's your name and what, did you, what were you gonna say? It was me, Chrissy, and I, he, that's what, exactly what I was gonna to say too, who was gonna be that loved one I'd be working with. But um, to go along with that is have your, that loved one ever um, been financially responsible for a funeral? Or had they ever dealt with the funeral? Or ever, ever right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So these are very important questions and things that we need to ask because it creates the conversation. We never want to be the ones that are sitting in that home doing all the talking. Never. Okay. One other question. Do you guys have an idea of another question or two that would be considered a power question? Who's that, Brandon? Yeah, it's Brandon. All right, what you have? I think uh, another example of a power question would be, do you know the average cost of a funeral? That is it. Do you know the cost of the funeral or cremation? Do you know how much it costs right now? Uh, I, it's amazing as some people told me that, oh yeah, funerals are $6,000. I'm like, since when? Because I have a copy of a funeral from back in 2009 that was 9,000. When was it six? You know? Um, some people really have no idea. And so they think that they have enough coverage. So we are there to educate. We are absolutely there to have the conversation, see what they know and help them with what they don't know. Help them with what they don't know. Any other questions you guys can think about that would be considered a power question. There's one other one that I'm, I'm looking for. Um. Will we be working with any other insurance? Um, that is one. Yeah. Okay. That any is one. That was the one I was thinking about, but that is definitely one. Do you have any other life insurance that we're going to be working with? Um, do they know the difference between term and whole life? That's it. That's it. Very good. Do they know the difference between term and whole life? 
The reason again for these questions is you need to help them understand what they know and what they don't know, right? Help them to understand that they need this benefit. Final expenses different than life insurance. This is the money. This is the immediate, almost. It pays in 24 hours of claim approval for the immediate need of the family. It also has that family support service that's going to help to make sure that we're getting the best price possible, right? We as family members, when our loved ones die, we don't know how we're going to respond when this one dies. We know how we responded when that one died, but not this one, right? And so it's important for us to make sure that they are understanding, like, did you think about if you went cremated or buried? Well, what are your loved ones going to do? If you don't know what you're going to do, how are they going to know how to handle you, right? These are the hard things that the family members, the clients need to, to address, all right? Um, very good. Very good. Let's go ahead and move on. Did you send in it for yourself or another loved one? Most people fill out these cards because of a few reasons. If they have coverage, tell me about the coverage you have right now that we will be working with. Is it term or whole life? Do you know the difference? Tell me what you know about term and whole life coverage. When was the last time you experienced a funeral or death or a loved one? Who passed? Did you handle the arrangements? You're going to get a copy. Was there coverage in place? Have you thought of how you want to be handled, funeral or cremation? Who will be the one handling your arrangements when you pass? And have they been responsible for a funeral before? Every single one of them, guys. Give yourself a, a come on, clap your hands. Y'all need to feel good about yourself. Listen, this is important. This is your opportunity. This is your business. You need to know it. So now we're gonna close, all right? So now we're closing. You do not want to be afraid to ask for the money. We cannot apologize for the cost of insurance. We cannot apologize for the people waiting until they're 60, 70, 80 years old to get it. We cannot apologize for how much the funerals and cremation cost. It is not our fault. It's not our fault. And sometimes the client will try to make it as though it is your fault, right? And that again comes in loving on them and helping them understand insurance is based on the age and, the, and your health. And although you look good and you're walking and running up and down steps, you are still 77. At least, you know, and I just did one last week that was in the 70s and he's preferred, he's healthy. I'm like, well, the blessing is I can give you day one coverage where other companies will still make you pay for two years because you're older, right? So um, we cannot apologize for the prices. That's not our fault. So we do not, do not be afraid when it comes down to the close. When we come to the close, you want to recap. So now this is the time. All right, Mr. Jones, I, you know, we've sat here for a little while. We've gone over some things and let me just make sure I have everything um, correct. And I'm looking at my money sheet and I'm going down. All right, so you're 77 years young based on the medical questions that I asked you earlier. You do qualify for my preferred day one coverage. Um, you said that you wanted to be cremated with no viewing and um, you're not gonna be buried. You just want a direct cremation, right? You do have some other life insurance, that's whole life that's gonna go to your wife, but you just wanna make sure that there's some cash to help her in between waiting for that two to three months for that other insurance to pay out. Did I hear you right? Oh yeah, you got that right. Okay, great. So let me go ahead and get you some quotes here. Now, you do qualify for up to 35,000. However, I will say that most of my 70 year olds don't take out this 35,000, but I'm not going to discount you from taking advantage of that if you decide you wanna leave more cash, okay? But what I want you to do is I want you to be honest with me. So when I show you this number, just let me know if this is comfortable or not so much. And we're going to go ahead and get a plan that's comfortable for you, okay? Notice I'm constantly shaking my 77. I'm going in. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is great. Thank goodness you took care of yourself. Now, I don't know what the price is. I'm not going to do that right now. But I'm saying, okay, this is for 35000 for you, it is day one. So let me help you understand this. When you make this payment today, I'm going to have this bucket of 35000 of cash ready to be wired into your wife's bank account, okay? It's day one. God forbid anything were to happen within your first or second year because you took care of yourself, and I'm proud of you. But if this is not comfortable for you, that's okay. Let's go ahead and bring it down, okay? So for you, and I have my paper, and I just turn it over to him, and I let him see. That's only going to be, that's only going to be 
$399.62. Now, is that comfortable or not so much? And then stop talking. Let them go, have at it, go through their mind, right? If you start talking, the only thing you are talking about is, remember I said that you can go down, you know, you don't have to, stop talking. Let them think through that. If that is way too expensive for them, they're going to tell you immediately. Oh yeah, no, no, we're not doing that. Okay, great. Well, you told me you just want a little bit left over, but I did not want to show you what you qualified for. Okay. So let's take that down. Then I'm going to bring it all the way down to a 10,000, 8,000. Well, I'm going to do 10,000 and let him see that one at a time, one quote at a time. Okay, 10,000 for you. Okay, this is only $162. That sounds so much better than that 399, right? Okay, that's only 162, 20. Is that better, a little better for you? Is that comfortable or still not so much? Oh yeah, that's, that's about right where I was looking at, perfect. All I need you to do is go ahead and go get your checkbook. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this filled out and we're gonna make your verification call. It's gonna take about four minutes. They're just gonna make sure that everything that we went over today is accurate. And if they give me a reference number, that shows that your day one covered. So go ahead and get your checkbook and I'm gonna get this set up. Boom, I'm done. I'm done, okay? Any other managers wanna speak up on your clothes? Talking about the money. I was always- Hey, uh, Christy. Oh, go ahead. Go you know, ahead. Rick. Thanks, Craig. The person who, um, after you show them an option, should be quiet because the first person if you speak first basically you lose lost the deal mm -hmm. we can just be quiet i don't care how long it takes just sit there i'd be like <laughs> <laughs> i do i just sit there and, and be ready what you got what you have uh craig yeah i was just going to uh chime in just saying you know um if you build that value prior to giving those rates you'll pretty much know what they're going to what they're going to take and what they can afford and when i say building a value i look at their age um their beneficiary i'm always asking are you looking to leave money behind for the beneficiary and of course that power question cremation um, or burial will tell you what you're going to need to start with okay if they want to leave money for their looking to leave monies behind for the <clears throat> beneficiary, you know, you're going to need more than what it costs for a burial, but also their age. So let's say I took a per, uh, I took someone that is 56 years young and they want burial. And we know the going rate for a burial can be anywhere between nine and 12,000. Well, that is right now. You're 56 years young. Um, <clears throat> So we're going to, our goal is to build a plan that's going to protect you 20 plus years from now, because we, we, we all, we know that the price things go up. They don't, the prices don't, don't go down. Do you agree? And, and I'm, and I'm agree. And, and I'm asking them so they can tell me, yes, yeah, the prices are going to go up. So they already have an idea um, that, you know, they're going to need more than what the cost is for today. So if I know the cost, what the cost is for, what the cost is going to be down the road, I am when I give the rates, <clears throat> I am not going below fifteen or twenty thousand if they're day one coverage. I'm gonna let them tell me I need to go lower because again, I'm trying to build this plan not for the now, for the future. I I tell them I'm gonna make it so although you can increase with us at any time, the goal is to get as much as you can afford today because these rates that I'm giving you are locked in. They won't be the same five years ago, five years from now. And although you can increase when you want, um, anytime you increase, I have to go off of your current age and health. So, uh, you know, you you service, I'm, I'm servicing my client um, the, the right way, um, but in a way that <clears throat> they don't have to come back to me five years from now and because the rates are going the prices are going up and say you know what i don't have enough right. and now they may not be able to afford the rates five years down the road two years down the road so i put them in, but always keep this in mind you want to put something that's comfortable comfortable for their budget okay and if you're conversating correctly with your client you'll know what's comfortable for their budget just from their 
their body language, um, how they, you know, if they're feeling wild and they're saying, you know, uh, I think I think I can do 15,000. I think I can do 15,000. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, we'll just take the 15,000 with the accidental. Nope. They think they can do 15,000, but they can't really. You're going to get a, you're going to, they're going to take that 15,000 for today, but next month they'll be, they'll cancel. So you need to know how to service your client also. We're not, it's not about walking out with the biggest check. Um, but if you do get a big check and you feel that you service the client properly and they're writing that check with no hesitation, hey, you've done good. But if there's some hesitation, it's our job to make sure that, hey, we might need to talk to, talk to them. How about we look at this $12,000 or $10,000 policy? We can always increase later, okay? But if you learn to build the value, um, <clears throat> it will get you the bigger premiums and you will service your client, not for the now, but for the future. And that is so important. It is so important. Um, I, in the beginning, did not sell the value. I was selling policies and helping people at lower um you know, the lower uh, prices, if you will. So I was getting smaller, smaller checks. And now I'm going back and I'm like, how in the world do you only have $5,000? Meanwhile, I'm the one that sold them the $5,000 five, six years ago, right? And I'm like, you don't have any other life insurance and you want a funeral? I'm like, thank God you didn't die. I didn't do my job because I didn't know, you know? And we, we just started having the trainings. I, you know, I just didn't know. And I'm like, oh, at least I helped somebody but you're not like, you really want to make sure that you're helping them. And then I found, you know, uh, clients that I've gone to see after the fact, and they got two or three more policies. And I'm thinking, why didn't you call me to increase? Oh, well, I didn't know that I can increase. Well, that's because I didn't tell them because I was not, you know, really doing my job, if you will. Right. And it's just that I didn't know. You know? So we, we have so much that's to help you guys to be able to just take this information and run but you got to start running, right? It's time to get out of the nest. Jump, let them wings spread out and fly, but you have the portal to help you guys out. 